guys, and thank you so much for joining in. Today I am doing a tutorial on how to personalize a bath towel. Oftentimes I get a lot of questions on the supplies that I use, and so I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you. For starters, my first choice on towels is always going to be Mainstay's Performance Bath Towels. This is the Walmart brand, and it is purchased at Walmart. It's made of 100% cotton, and it is 30 inches wide by 54 inches long. They have a wide variety of colors and it is decent quality best of all it is about under five dollars and so you can get decent quality embroidery the results is going to be amazing all for under five dollars so that means that your profit if you are selling this is going to be higher because of the value of this towel i would like to point out that i am also an affiliate at walmart and so if you make a purchase from the link that I am posting below. I earn a small commission, which helps my channel out. And so I'd like to thank you in advance. questions are in regards to needles what size needle to use and what brand needles to use i recommend that you use a size 14 needle however on the internet you may find that they recommend a size 12 needle but in my opinion it really depends on the thickness of your towel if you have a really thick towel like a department store towel or a name brand towel it's going to be better quality better quality is best up against the skin however it's going to cause your embroidery machine to work a little bit harder and it's going to cause that needle to have to dig deeper into the fabric all right and so if you have a towel that is lighter meaning it's not as thick as this one you may get away with a size 12 so in my opinion you want to have a size 12 a size 14 and a size 16 available so you are prepared to um, equip your machine with with whatever size needle is required the next question in regards to needles are what brand to use. Today I am using the Soology brand. Soology is one of the Hobby Lobby brands. They have a sale every four to six weeks for 50% off on all Soology products, which means that I pay $1.25 for this four pack of universal needles. These needles work well in my serger, my sewing machines, my embroidery machines. So I have them in all sizes and all styles available because of the price and the quality that I get with the Soology brand. However, I do have these uh, in stock as well. These are organ needles. They work well too. In my opinion, in my opinion, the best needles on the market at this point that are avail uh, available and easily accessible are the Singer brand. The Singer brand are going to cost you much more than the Soology brand, meaning you're not going to get four universal needles for $1.25, but they are good. And so I suggest that you buy them in small packs and then test them out in your machine and see which one that your machines like, but most importantly, which ones that your pockets can afford. The second most popular question that I get is in regards to stabilizer. I recommend that if you are going to be embroidering on a towel, you want to use a medium weight cutaway stabilizer, not fusible. So once again, it is a medium weight cut away stabilizer reason being is number one the size of the stabilizer is going to be the size of the hoop and so if you are fusing that large piece of stabilizer to the back of your towel you're going to have a tough time getting it off when it's time to remove it okay and so if you use a cutaway you can get really close to the embroidery and cut the excess away you don't have to pull fibers you don't have to fight with it you could just simply cut it away However, if you are going to be using a cutaway stabilizer, you are going to have to use something to help you along. That something is going to be some kind of adhesive spray. I recommend that you do not use the fast grab tacky spray as you see here. Reason being is because I have mentoring embroidery students and or embroidery mentoring students and they hate it, but I love it. And so I feel like the majority rules. And I think also I have a lot of experience with the uh, fast grab tacky spray and the Aline's um, 
tacky spray in general because they do come in one is more stronger than the other however my embroidery mentoring students have reported that they don't like it because it's messy it gums up their needles it even stains the fabric perhaps it doesn't do that for me because I am a little bit more experienced than they are meaning my hand isn't as heavy so I don't know how much they are spraying I don't know um, how intense they are spraying it and so it may cause too much spray to go on the, the medium weight stabilizer and they may cause a mess. However, with the needles, I do change my needles often because remember, I'm buying Soology brand needles. They are $1.25. So if I have to change them after each project or once a day or whatever, I'm totally okay with that. But once again, you are going to be using a medium weight stabilizer, a medium weight cutaway stabilizer. You're going to be using a light spray. That light spray should be something that is repositional, removable. And I will post a link below for the proper spray to get to use with your medium weight stabilizer. Okay, so the next stabilizer that I'd like to recommend is a water salvi stabilizer. This is a topping and it goes on top of the garment, the item that you will be embroidering on that has a high piled uh, to it. So that would be a towel, that would be fleece, that would be something that's thick. Okay, and what that's going to do is you're going to lay this on top of the item and you're going to embroider directly on it. What it's going to do is lay these fibers down and I will demonstrate that when we get to the embroidery part of it. And so, so far this is what we have here. We have the medium cutaway stabilizer underneath which is going to be on the hoop and then we have the embroidery water salvi topping that's going to be on top. So you have support on the bottom of your, or on the reverse side of your towel or your garment, and you have a protectant, a protectant that's going to help enhance your embroidery and make it appear a better. Otherwise you run the risk of the embroidery sinking into the fibers. Okay, so the third stabilizer that I recommend, and this is purely optional. I know a lot of embroiderers who do not use this, but I use this with all embroidery projects that are going to come into contact, direct contact with the skin. And that would be a fusible knit interfacing and underlining. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide a barrier between the embroidery, the cutaway stabilizer, and your client's skin. So think of a baby. If you are embroidering on a onesie, a t-shirt is going to be in direct contact with the skin. On the reverse side of that t-shirt where your embroidery is, it could irritate the skin. If you are cutting away stabilizer, the edges of the stabilizer could irritate the skin. If you fuse this on the reverse side of it, it is going to prevent the uh, embroidery from scratching the surface of the skin. And it's also going to hold down the jagged edge of your embroidery um, stabilizer. And so in my opinion, this is a must have. Okay, before we begin the embroidery, I like to recommend that you always try to upgrade your customer. And so when a customer calls you with a request for a personalized towel, always try to upgrade them. Ask them, would they like any trimming or lace? Or if they would like um, some scalloping around here with fabric, you can also try to upgrade them to a full-blown custom-made spa towel. And so never ever settle for just a personalized towel. If they accept your upgrade of services, then you have to be able to present them. If they want both sides with the fabric, if they want one side with fabric, if they want both ends of the towels with trimming and so forth. In this case, we are just going to be putting trim on one side of the towel. Okay, so as you can see, I have upgraded this order by adding trim to it. And I've used three different kinds of trim, one bold one, and then an embroidered one, and then a pom-pom one. And I just doubled up or paired it right here and then used the two here. If you notice on the other end, it will not have any kind of trim or embellishment. And the reason is because this area will be hidden behind this area when it is folded over and hanging on a, a towel rack. The embroidery is going to 
to go in the center here. And so that means that uh, only this area will be seen, the embroidery, the personalization, and this part. This part will be completely covered. One of the things I want to point out is when you are doing your placement, notice I have folded this towel. Okay, so I folded it. And then I put a pin in the middle here. So when I put it on the embroidery hoop or the machine, before I do my embroidery, I'm going to do a, a trace out stitch just to see the area of where the embroidery is going to go. And it should be within this area, within this middle point. So let's get it over to the machine. Okay, so I have the towel on the hoop and in the embroidery machine. And now I'm going to just slip that water solvy topping over the towel. All right, and now, you know, some people will use a light spritz. If you are going to use a spritz for this, literally very, very, very light, very, very faint. Otherwise, you will uh, cause the water solvy to stick to the fibers when you are uh, taking it off. Okay, so the personalization have been uploaded to the machine and I have also marked the area that I needed to go in between. So you have your midline point here and I have a, a line here and I have a line here. Now this name is really only four letters so it will fit in between here. But this is a guide, a guide that will help you understand or have an idea of where this embroidery is going to go. One of the things that you want to make sure is that on both ends past here, it is the same amount of fabric or a towel or blanket. And so once again, starting with the midline point will help you get an idea of what is going to happen. All right, and so to do that, I recommend that you, oh, wait, let me go back, that you press, you press the, uh, the outline, which is going to show you where the embroidery is going to be taking place. And if you do not like the area of where the embroidery is going to be taking place, now is your time to move it over. So I want to point out something to you that you may not have noticed. Okay, and so what I have noticed is that even though this is the midpoint, when it went to do the, uh, the trace out, it seems that the uh, personalization is more shifted towards this side than this side. So that means that if I embroider it this way, then I'm going to have more fabric or more towel left on this area. It's not going to be centered. And so I'm going to do another trial. But uh, what I would like to do is I would like to make sure, number one, that I am looking at the right, the right needle. And I see that the positioning is on one. It really should be on five because that's where I am going to be um, embroidering it. So let me just make sure that it is positioned on five. So I'm turning it to five. And now I'm just going to uh, go back and do a uh, trace out line. So once again, the way this, this number five, when it came over here, it stopped here. But then when it came over here, it stopped more closer to this line, which is one of the reasons why I recommend that if you are a bit nervous about centering and so forth, you want to give yourself some guides. So what I'm going to do now is just push the design over some, all right? And so remember this is going to be left to right so i could either push it like that but i want it more so i'm just going to push it and then i'm just going to do a trace out again and then i'm going to come back and see okay that's a little bit better Okay, so as you can see though, the starting point is right in the middle. 
So I am okay with the way this is uh, going to embroider. And the reason being is also you want to take a look at the design. And so the way the design is, notice that the K actually extends a lot backwards. So it, the back extends out. And so that may mean that the embroidery actually starts here. But by the time the K is embroidered, the A will be here. Okay, and that's okay because then we got the T, then we got the Y, and it will pair up nicely. And that is also according to what I see there as well. Notice the midpoint where the square is, is right under the A. Okay, so let's get started. Due to the speed of the embroidery, it's not hard to believe that at some point if you have a high piled towel, it could get caught in one of those little loops. The water solving just helps prevent that. So we are almost done with the embroidery. And the positioning of the embroidery is exactly where I predicted it to be. And so making marking points or guideline points will help you out tremendously. But if you pay attention to how well the embroidery machine is gliding across that water salvi, it really just make life easier. Not only that, it will also help the embroidery pop out against the high power fabric. Okay, so the embroidery is complete. And as you can see, I have it off the machine, but I still have the water solvy stabilizer on. I just want to show you that this is what happens when you don't use a light spritz to adhere it. I don't really like to do that, but I do understand that sometimes it's necessary. It should just come off like so. So I'm using one hand, but you can see how easily this comes off. Now, if you want to be frugal, be careful when you take it off because you can reuse this, okay? If you want to be frugal. All right, but basically it comes off very, very easily. Very easily. Now, if you add some spritz to it, now what's going to happen is this little film is going to stick to the fibers here. So let me just clear. Okay, so here's what it looks like without using the interfacing or the underlining. And I got to tell you, to be quite frank, this would be okay. This is acceptable. People understand that you embroider on one side and the other side, the embroidery stitches will be exposed. However, I like to do whatever I can to protect direct contact, to direct skin contact that is. Especially when we are, are doing baby garments, we have to be mindful that their skin is a little bit more sensitive than ours and constant rubbing in the same area can cause irritation. Maybe not more so with a towel, but with a t-shirt, especially because they have it on against their skin longer. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do now is just cover this area with a rectangular block of interfacing okay so what I like to do is I like to lay it over the area all right and so you want to make sure that your interfacing extends about a half or a quarter inch I say a quarter inch is okay a half to a quarter or a quarter inch to a half a quarter inch to a half around your embroidery design. Now, this is going to be the rough side of it. Um, we're going to turn it over and then we're going to fuse it. All right. And so this block or this piece is going to be okay because once I cut it out, it will be straight. And so one of the things is this fabric, um, it's not really a fabric, but the interfacing is a, a, a meshy material with a soft glue on it. And so getting it straight can be challenging. You could try to cut it with pinking shares. Um, I don't have my sharp pair of scissors handy. I only have these. So hopefully it doesn't come out to be too dull. But ideally, we would like all the lines or all the corners to be straight and not rugged or jagged like so. 
So I wanted to show you as best as I can using one hand how this is done. And so uh, the interfacing is going to be like so. The glue side is going to be down. And so you see how I'm able to move it. And what's going to happen is it's going to fuse the interfacing into the area. So I'm just pressing down. And I am going to hold for another five seconds. And up. Okay, and then I'm going to press down for that little piece. For another five seconds. And then it's up. Okay, and so let's see if you can see that. See how this is fused in? Now I'm unable to move it. And now I'm just going to press it again because this looks like it didn't stick well. But other than that, this is how you pretty much fuse it onto the reverse side of your towel. You can actually go over the rest of the areas in seconds of three, but you don't want to do too much because you don't want to burn it. So now it's nice and smooth up against it so if this was a baby's uh, onesie it would be okay okay you guys you know that i could not leave you without showing you how this particular towel will be presented and so the title of this video is called how to embroider on a towel and that's what I've shown you. And if you would like to learn how to put this together, please click the link below because I've got you covered. Other than that, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you not, have not done so already. And remember, you can find me in the group Embroidery Boss on Facebook as well as Dollar Tree Moneymakers. Or you can come visit my Facebook page at CandiaHainsworth.com. You can also find me on Instagram at CandiaHainsworth Designs. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye. One more thing, you guys, I wanted to tell you about a program that I joined free called Top Cashback. Okay, so Top Cashback have partnered with a wide variety of stores and they pay you a commission when you shop online. And so you're shopping online anyway, right? So you might as well make something off of it. All right. And once again, it is free to join. No membership fees, no subscription fees. You get paid through PayPal or a Visa prepay card, an Amazon gift card, or an American Express rewards card. I currently get paid through PayPal, but that might change depending on what the bonuses are for getting paid through the other options. All right. The other thing I like is there's no minimum payout. Other affiliate companies, you have to make $100 or um, reach a $500, $1,000. It's nothing like that. It's no minimum payout. So you, you tell them when you want to be paid. Another thing that I like is they're not selling your information to people. So no soliciting here. And, and you get $10 when you refer someone. So you can beat that. All right. And so if you're interested and you want to learn more, click the link below.